Hi everyone, my name is Vasutha. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be sharing my thoughts on the quintessential relationship between books and beverages. For me, it would be an understatement to say that my reading is incomplete without a cup of tea or coffee. I love taking my books to a coffee shop and I enjoy turning the pages while sipping from my cup at my home too. I often wonder what is so special about these two. Is it our neuro demand of staying more alert while reading that we consume caffeine or nicotine alongside or is it something more? To me, it's the feeling of comfort and even coziness, especially on rainy and winter days, to hold a book in one hand and a warm cup in another. But to be honest, I prefer reading in a coffee shop over home any day. Somehow I can work or read in a coffee shop, even though some are bustling with the pounding noise of coffee brewing machines, much better than I can at home. Perhaps because there are more distractions at home than at a coffee shop, I'm not sure. But coffee shops win any day, even over libraries, unless they have a cafe. Whether it was writing my doctoral thesis or my blog articles, I used to diligently tug my laptop to coffee shops each day for several months. I cannot thank Cafe Coffee Day and Second Cup enough. And book cafes or bookstores plus cafes are simply ideal for a bibliophile like me. So what makes these book cafes or coffee shops so attractive to the book lovers? Since reading is a solitary occupation, cafes provide a perfect escape from the usual banal cubicle environments and offer a lively reading spot with the change of scenery where book lovers can take a break and read in the presence of amazing aroma all around them. Cafes provide an escape from the din of our home and the commotion of our office desk. That's why coffee shops have also become more popular workspaces and also because of the free Wi-Fi they provide. And somehow work does not feel like work, whether you are preparing for a meeting or studying for an exam. Coffee stimulates and aids in retaining our focus on our work. Cafes also act like social spaces where we can have book club discussions or meetings of various sorts. The quixotic thing about cafes is that we are public yet anonymous at the same time. And not to forget, coffee itself is addictive. In fact, the issue of the effects of caffeine on our neurosystem is still an unresolved debate. And even the most significant historical events in the world, like slave trade, colonialism and industrial revolution, transpired in major parts because of tea and coffee. One can also attribute the coffee shops to be churners of big ideas. Many great philosophers and writers of the 17th and 18th centuries are known to resort to tea salons and coffee shops for the stimulating effect of these beverages that help them stay awake all night to think and write. It would then not be an exaggeration to believe that cafes translate into spaces of creative imagining and learning. Whether it was the French writer Balzac who is known to consume dry coffee grounds to stay stimulated to write throughout the night, or was it Ernest Hemingway, T.S. Eliot, Voltaire who consumed 40 to 50 cups of joe a day, or Simone de Beauvoir, Jean-Paul Sartre, Franz Kafka, Fitzgerald, and even J.K. Rowling, many famous thinkers and writers frequently visited their preferred cafes to do their creative writing. And their most well-recognized work emerged from their coffee shop writing.
It clearly looks like coffee is the fuel to not just our cognitive functioning but also our creative impulses. Book cafes present an opportunity to its local community to develop and nurture their love for reading. When you have a cozy place to sit, a beverage of your choice by your side, what more can you ask for as a book lover? By offering lucrative discounts on books and beverages, book cafes help promote a reading culture. They are a great place to host the authors for their book releases or book tours, exchange ideas and build an interactive community hub of readers and writers and coffee lovers. Many bookstores come cafes have become major tourist destinations for such reasons. Take Shakespeare and Company or The Elephant House for example. Can you imagine Paris, Rome or Vienna without their cafes? The culture of reading in coffee shops may have been a European thing for long with the proliferation of coffee houses dating back to the 1600s. And then again there was a significant growth in their numbers in the 1950s. But in contemporary times, thanks to the forces of cultural globalization, the concept of coffee shops and reading cafes has now spread all over the world. Some of the popular book cafes in Delhi, where I presently live, are Chabar, Cafe Turtle, Kumzum Cafe, May Day, and there are many more that are mushrooming in and around my city. I have also lived close to Toronto for almost three years and two of my favorite bookstores and cafes there are the chain of Indigo bookstores with its beautifully laid out interiors and a Starbucks inside each of them and Studio 89 which is a vegan cafe promoting the local community and hosting several local events including book club discussions and even game nights. My choices reflect two philosophically different types of book cafes. One, a large chain of bookstore and the other, a more local venture. And I support both. This reminds me of the classic Tom Hanks Meg Ryan movie, You've Got Mail, where Hanks fancy commercialized bookstore poses a challenge to Ryan's boutique bookshop. Which one do you prefer? the quiet bookshops or the ostentatious ones. I recently came to know about a website called coffeetivity.com which replicates background coffee shop noise. Well, it may delude the reader for a few minutes but not for long. Minus the aroma and the ambience, such websites or even apps would never be able to substitute the real coffee shop experience. Plus, we cannot get our caffeine fix from such websites. But before you start making plans of visiting your favorite cafe with your books, I would also like to warn you about burning your pocket. Almost an year ago, I came across this book called The Latte Factor by David Bach, which suggests to save our bucks on the frequent coffee trips because without realizing, we end up spending a whole lot on our lattes and they add up a lot to our monthly budget. This book certainly was an eye opener for me a bibliophile and coffee lover in equal measure. And to be honest, since then, I have consciously limited my visits to the coffee shops and I do that only in moderation now. That is not to say that I have compromised on my love of reading in a cafe. Rather, whenever I do indulge, I now get an extra special feeling out of it. For me, books and coffee will always make a perfect pair. So much so that it is my long-term dream of opening my very own book cafe one day. As of now, I'm always on a lookout for new bookstores serving a steaming hot cappuccino in my vicinity. Whichever city you may live in, if you pass by a book cafe next time, 
please do tag me if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and do share your views in the comment section below until next video thank you and bye